Not only did we create the first DIY metallic epoxy countertop kit, we also came up with a way to do dirty pours on countertop surfaces. This video is gonna show you step-by-step -step how to recreate this look using a Ligari stone kit. So I'm gonna go over priming, how to apply our primer. It's very, very simple. Um, first thing we wanna do, we got our 3 8 snap roller here. I wanna show you how to de-shed it if you, if you don't know how to do that. So we just use painter's tape, yellow painter's tape. You can just put it anywhere. And then we're gonna roll the roller on it and this is gonna get any loose hairs off of here. So it's good to get into the habit of always doing this when you're using uh, nap rollers that have, have hairs on them, foam rollers. It's always good to do those also, but a little bit more critical when you're doing the naps. All right, so we're gonna put some gloves on. And this is basically all we need to, to prime. We got the roller tray, our roller. We got our primer. Um, we have our water, because we're gonna be adding water to it, and then just a, a cup to mix it in. You need about a 32 ounce cup to fit the primer into. And you can see right here it says add once mixed, blend in two ounces of clean water. So this is the two ounces of clean water. I already have that measured out. It's always good to give it a little bit of a shake just in case anything settled in there. Tilt it back, get all that out of the, the handle there. And then we're gonna add our part B. Now this is the pigmented part. A little bit thicker. And I'm not worried about shaking this because I'm gonna actually add the water to the Part B since it is thicker to get all the leftover that's in the container here. Two ounces of water. Right into our Part B. We'll put the lid back on, shake that up. And then for the primer, um, we're just gonna mix with a stir stick. It mixes really, really easy. It's really fluid. And we wanna mix this for about, about two, three minutes or until you get a consistent color. You can still see some, some white in there. We wanna get that a solid color. Notice I'm scraping my edges as I'm mixing. Wanna scrape the bottom. All right, so that's ready to go, solid color. I just gotta dump in the, the roller tray and then we'll start priming. Now we won't need all this primer. We send out plenty primer. Uh, this is a 50 square foot kitchen. Um, so a lot of times, like if you're going, say, say we're going over, we wanted to do white on this counter, um, we're gonna be using a white primer. So it's not gonna cover the dark edges as well with one coat, so you need to do two coats. We're not as concerned about the top but if you can see through on any of your edges or the corners, you wanna hit that again and you only need to wait. But by the time you're done doing your first coat, you can usually go back and prime your edges again. So it's really fast, but you wanna make sure you can get your edges, your corners, a solid color, just like the primer. You don't wanna see through it at all. So we'll just soak this up for a minute. And then we'll just do a pass down the middle and then just cross roll this. So this is a fast cure primer, so it's gonna dry really fast, and you need to apply your epoxy over this within two hours. So if you can't apply your epoxy within two hours, then you probably shouldn't prime your, your counters. Because if you wait the next day or, or past that, this stuff's gonna be basically a sealed surface, um, and you're gonna need to scuff it up a little or do like a denatured alcohol wipe on it to tack it, make it get tacky. It's made to go on thin, as you can see. And all I'm doing is rolling it out quick. And then I'll look for any thick spots, roller lines, make sure my edges are all hit, my corners. And if there's any thick roller lines, I'll kind of roll those out. And then we just kind of continue that process throughout the counters. But you can kind of see how you can see through in some spots. Again, that doesn't really matter on the top. The product's so much thicker on the top than the edges, so in the faces. We just wanna really get these faces and edges a solid gray color. 
that's what I mean. We can kind of see through it. So I'm gonna come back when I'm all done, just hit those faces again, and they'll be a solid gray color. And you can see right here, so what we did, since we don't have a backsplash, we just taped the wall, and then we took the same paint color. We had tape going down here so we didn't get a lot on the plastic, we got a little bleed. Um, and then we brushed the same color that's on the wall on this tape, and that's gonna seal that up so we don't get any bleed from epoxy or primer since it's a textured wall. Cool little trick when you want like nice crisp lines, just paint over your tape with the same wall color and that'll seal up any spots that are gonna wind up bleeding. And then obviously if you guys have backsplashes like tile or glass that has grout, you would tape it like this. Um, and we like to use the uh, painter's tape for tiles and stuff, it'll stick better. And then obviously you can't paint on that because the paint's not gonna match. So we just do a clear uh, latex paintable caulking we run that in there and that'll seal up the tape as well. So another thing, we're going over in a sanded epoxy surface. If you're going over like unsanded or, or from mica sometimes you'll get you'll roll out the primer and it'll separate fish eye in spots that has like contaminations or maybe some silicone residue let the primer set up a little um, just like we are gonna on the faces and then when you re-roll that when it gets a little tacky it'll fill those in so don't worry about about that just keep priming and then come back after that primer set for a little bit and just re-roll those spots and then we did the the decorative edge here we've already coated over it once so we're just going to coat over it again it's going to fill it in a little bit more but you should still be able to see it so i don't even need to necessarily re re-dip my roller right i can just hit this again some of these spots a little bit thick, not that it matters. This is gonna take a little longer to dry. So I'll just roll this out real quick. Now when you're coating it again, um, you don't wanna overwork it. If I, if I overwork it, it'll start to pull that first layer up. So we wanna just hit it really quick and light. Same thing with our edges. Get a little bit more on here. I'm not gonna dip it all the way in there because I don't wanna get a lot on the roller since I'm just hitting my edges. You can see how much more of a solid color it'll make those edges just one more quick hit on them again you don't want to over roll it just real quick and light you can see how fast it dries like this is already ready to go and you can tell it still looks wet versus dry but that's all right it's already getting tacky so i can just hit it again this one we obviously just finished so i need to let that sit a little bit more because you can tell doesn't cover it like it did everywhere else. So we'll let that tack up just a tad bit, five minutes probably. Um, I'll finish that out. And then if you guys can put a fan, obviously you don't wanna blow dust and, and debris on it, but if you can get some airflow on the primer, it's gonna dry even faster. But we'll probably, I'll put a fan on this and we'll probably start the epoxy about a half an hour from now. So the primers dry really quick, um, easy to do two coats. Main thing is make sure your edges, your faces, are as solid of the primer colors you can get it. You don't want to see through that at all. All right, so to do our Ligari stone countertops, um, we got to tape the edges, right? We want to create a dam to keep that resin on the counter until we want it to flow over the edge. Best way to do this, we're going to use painter's tape, yellow painter's tape, two strips around everything, and we want to make sure we're taping high. We don't want to tape low to where the resin can get to the top of that tape and kind of push it over and flow, flow over the counter. So I'm gonna tape high. Now the primer's tacky, but it's dry, it's not coming up. So you wanna make sure the primer's dry. Um, it's okay if it's tacky, it's still gonna cure underneath that tape. Last thing you wanna do is put the tape on some wet primer 
and you're going to lose your bond and then you're going to get resin flowing underneath that tape. So there's our first pass and then we're going to do another pass, try to keep it at the same height. And then what we want to do after we get the tape on is really press this down good. We want to get a good tight seal, especially on our corners. So once you get that good seal on there, we're just going to take these corners and just do a little crease in them. Basically just pinch the edge in just like that. That'll make the tape a little tighter, make your corners nice and tight. So that's it. So we'll continue the process, taping two rows of tape, make sure it's high. And then biggest thing is make sure you're really pushing that down, getting a good seal. When you get to inside corners, you wanna just slowly push that tape into it so that you don't have a gap there. We wanna make sure that's nice and tight in that inside corner. To the inside of the sink. So make sure you're really pressing that tape and getting a good seal. So when you got a decorative edge like we do here, you really wanna press that top corner in. So you're not gonna get a good seal where all the texture is on your edge. So I'm kind of pressing in on the top just a little bit. That's how you tape off. So we'll get started mixing um, and go from there. Okay, I wanna show you uh, how to mix up this Ligari stone kit. This Ligari stone kit has three adamantiums in it, a midnight pearl and a dark mercury. And we're also going to be using some white spray paint in this kit. This is Rust-Oleum. It's just white, it's gloss protective enamel. Real, real straightforward there, gloss spray paint. Open up the rest of the kit. Now we have our three gallon countertop kit, two gallons of A, one gallon of B. So before we mix this up, and I'll show you how to separate it, and we'll get Tyler some clear for his base coat, I wanna show you um, a lot of the stuff you're going to need. So we have a bunch of uh, two quart containers. You can get two and a half quart containers. We have six of those. We have one standard quart container. And then we have a bunch of these five quart containers. We have five of these, these are big. So we're gonna mix our color in here and then we're going to pour it in here. And then of course we have some five gallon paint sticks and some standard one gallon paint sticks. A couple drills set up, one with a large paddle wheel and a small paddle wheel that we'll put on this other drill. Of course, we have some gloves and I have a respirator for when we're mixing up the metallics. I do recommend that you mix up the metallics outside if you can. You don't want the metallics floating around um, the building or the house where you're working. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get Tyler 64 ounces of resin so he can begin to apply the base coat. I actually think we will need uh, one more of these two core containers. So the first thing we wanna do is pour out 42 ounces of A. And obviously if we have 42 ounces of A, we want 21 ounces of B because our resin is two to one. So two parts A to one part B. Going to pour my part B into my part A. And now with the small mixing wheel, there's two settings on this drill. I wanna put it on the low setting and I wanna mix this for a couple minutes, moving up and down the container slowly and spinning it on the side, the bottom. You gotta be careful with some of these containers that you can buy though. Some of them are really flimsy. You can actually break the container. Um, just depends on the quality of container you have. Now what you wanna do is grab a fresh paint stick. Don't use the paint stick we use to get the part B into the part A. Use a fresh paint stick. And what we're going to do is pour all of this material into this new jug. It's a brand new jug. 
we want to make sure that this is mixed thoroughly. If you don't pour it into new jugs and mix for another 30 to 45 seconds, you can't guarantee that you won't have soft spots. And soft spots are kind of a nightmare in the industry. Now, and I can actually look in this and there's some part A's that was on the edge of the container that is now in the middle of the resin that I can actually see. So now we're gonna mix it for another 30 to 45 seconds just to mix that in and it's ready to go. I'm gonna let as much of this get off the drill as possible before I spin off all the excess. All right, now we have a thoroughly mixed thin clear coat for Tyler to put on these counters. All right, so what we're gonna need to do this thin layer of the clear epoxy is a foam roller um, and a squeegee. You can also use a paint stick, use that as a squeegee. Really simple to apply. And what you're gonna wanna do is when you start doing your clear coat, this coat right here, you want whoever's helping you to start mixing up all the metallics for the, the dirty pour effect, right? That way when we're done doing this, this, this thin base coat basically, I can start dumping out the the epoxy for the actual coating. That way we're not letting this set up, taking longer. So it's always good to have someone help you. And again, once you start this, they can start mixing all the colors together. Um, that way when you're ready to go, you got epoxy. So what we wanna do, this obviously needs to go over the whole counter. So I wanna start out with thin beads everywhere and make sure they're all even. I don't have really thick wide beads in some spots, really thin in others. So we're gonna start out with small beads and we can always come back and add to them. So on like an island like this, I would do two, since it's obviously wider than the, the other cap, uh, counters. And I'm gonna tilt that back so we're not dripping. And then on this, I'll just pour one right down the middle. Because we don't wanna have to be picking up epoxy and moving it around. So best thing to do is start out small and then we can go back and add, add to the same beads. And I'm just kind of adding anywhere it's a little bit thinner, right? This is a little wider than out here, so I just added some there. This one's looking fairly even. Over here, we got a really wide spot, so we don't need any there. I'm gonna add a little here. And then before we run out, we wanna get a little bit on these tight spots. You see back in the corner, you might need a little bit because it's a little wider back there. All right, so there's that. Now, we're just gonna take the squeegee. You can roll it if you don't have a squeegee. It's just gonna take you a little longer. And if you're doing it with just a roller, you wanna really press hard and almost use it like a squeegee. Right, but I, I like to do the squeegee. It goes a lot faster. And I'm just flattening it off. I'm holding the squeegee at a low angle so I'm not pulling all the resin off and just flattening it all off real quick. And then once I get done with that, I'll take the roller and roll over the whole surface. And then we'll kind of bring it up to our edges and notice how I'm holding that squeegee at a low angle. The more you spread it out with the squeegee, the easier it is to roll it. Now we're just gonna roll it out real quick. Just back and forth. This is gonna help get rid of any thick spots, any unevenness to it. Notice I'm really not trying to push into the tape. I'm stopping before I hit that tape. Really simple, so everything's got a thin coat. You can kind of hear my roller, it doesn't sound sticky. That's how you want it to sound. If it sounds sticky in spots, you need to kind of move some resin over to that area, but this is good. So now I'll do the continue this process throughout the rest of the counters, and that's basically how you do your thin coat of epoxy. Really simple, fast. Um, just make sure when you start this process, you have whoever's helping you start mixing it all the metallics, all the colors for the actual dirty pour technique. 
Okay, Tyler's <laughs> laying out that first base coat. Now, since this takes just a couple minutes to let these containers drain, we're gonna pour both part A's into a five gallon bucket. I'm just hanging them in there with a uh, five gallon stir stick. The other thing is there's a lot of surface area on the inside of these containers. Um, the one frustration with them is that it takes a little bit to drain it all out. So it's nice to have them upside down for a while. Don't wait until you're ready to mix up to do this. Just leave them upside down while, while the base coat's happening. And the other thing to be aware of is that the top of the containers have this handle and sometimes if you pour the epoxy too fast, it can get caught in the handle. So you wanna just tip it up for a few seconds and then tilt it back down just to make sure everything's out of those handles. And what I'm waiting for when I'm draining these out, and, and you can wait even longer if you want, is I'm waiting for the epoxy stream to turn more into a drip. I just want most of the epoxy out. You really wanna make sure you acclimate the epoxy to the room you're working in as well and you want to try to install around 70 degrees all right so that's definitely getting there that's more of a drip i'm happy with that not much running out of that one either now i'm going to pour the rest of my part b in here and the part b much more fluid so it's going to drain a lot quicker crystal clear and if you pour slow it's not going to get caught up in this handle. And the same thing, you're just gonna kinda wait for that stream to turn more into a drip. Okay, it's starting to really drip. It's a real fine, fine stream. I could leave it upside down for another minute if I wanted to, but that's all right. Wanna get this moving along. Now I'm gonna use the big paddle wheel on a, on a fairly high speed. And we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna mix this up for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna dump it into another bucket, mix it for another 30 to 45 seconds. And same thing, I'm moving, moving the drill up and down, scraping the bottom, the sides with the drill head. And now I'm going to pour this into the other bucket. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape the inside of this, just like with the smaller container. I'm scraping all the bottom, all the sides. I wanna get all of this epoxy into this other bucket. If you get any epoxy on yourself, spray a little bit of denatured alcohol on a rag, keep your hand clean, keep the drill clean. Makes everything a lot nicer. So we're gonna, again, mix this for about another 30 to 45 seconds in the new bucket. All right, we spun off the drill in the bucket. Now what I want to do is set out five of these big containers and I want to pour to 64 ounces in all of them so that we can mix in all of our metallic colors. And again, we're going to do adamantium in three of them and dark mercury in one, midnight pearl in another one. So the first thing we want to do is pour in 64 ounces. The biggest thing is making sure that You've distributed the epoxy in all the buckets evenly. As you can see, some have a little more than 64 ounces, some have a little less than 64 ounces, so we just wanna start to even those out a little bit. We just want the epoxy pretty even. You're gonna have a little bit of loss of epoxy in the buckets when you're pouring into new buckets, not much, but it's more important that you make sure that the epoxy is mixed thoroughly than to make sure you have you know, that extra two or three ounces. So all of them are either at 64 ounces, maybe right under 64 ounces, but we're pretty much, we're pretty much right there. So now I have mixed epoxy. This is where you don't want to take a long time. I have mixed epoxy now, but you'll see you have plenty of time to do this. And even me explaining this process, I have plenty of time. I'm just going to pour all the metallics in these and I'm going to mix it up and then we'll make our dirty pour um, batches basically. And so, What's cool is I don't need to switch drills out for every color. I just need to make sure that I'm mixing from the lightest color to the darkest color. So I'm going to mix up the adamantium first, use the same drill, then mix up the dark mercury, and then I'll go to the midnight pearl so I can keep using the same drill. 
if you go from darker colors to lighter colors, it's kind of like drawing, right? You're always going to make the lighter colors darker, but it's tough for the light colors to make the dark colors light. So I'm going to put a mask on because I don't want to be breathing metallics. Remember, the epoxy's already mixed up, so what I'm doing now is not mixing the epoxy, I'm just trying to submerse all of the metallics and blend it in enough where there's no more pockets of powder. That's the biggest key. You're trying to get rid of all powder and emulsify it into the liquid. Okay, now it's time to make our dirty pour batches. This is when it gets fun. So I'm gonna set my three adamantiums over there, my dark mercury, midnight pearl. Now I'm gonna take five fresh buckets. These are the two quart containers. Again, you can use two and a half quart containers. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take my spray paint and I'm gonna put this spray paint in the first three containers. So we'll put this rag over it. And we're just gonna spray it on the edge. We're gonna tilt it up a little bit because you wanna keep the container, the paint container upright as much as you can. Obviously you should still be wearing a mask right now, but I took mine off. You're gonna to wanna to wear a mask for this one. You can see we're putting quite a bit of white in there. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. And we're just spraying it on the side so it drips down the side. All right, now we have the spray paint done and I'm um, semi-high. And now we're going to pour the colors in these buckets to create batches. So the first thing I wanna do, because we have a lot of the adamantium, is I wanna put some adamantium in all of these and then we'll add the dark mercury and the midnight pearl to a couple of them. And I'm gonna to try to just split this between some of them. Guys, there's really not a right or wrong way to do this. This is what makes the Ligari Stone Kit so unique. I'm gonna use a paint stick and just get all of this out of the container. Now we have one bucket down, four to go. And now what I'll do is I'll actually add some black and some more adamantium to these mixes at the same time. And maybe on a couple of them, we'll just add some black by itself right at the end. We decide to keep some left. We'll take some of the dark mercury now, pour it through the middle a little bit. Do some more adamantium. I'm gonna go back with some dark mercury, pour through the middle again the other way, and it's crazy. You'll see how this actually affects it. It's actually creating layers within the mix. And when Tyler pours it out, some of these colors are gonna blend together. Some of the colors will be vibrant by themselves. Obviously, these colors are fairly close intent, but it's still going to look beautiful and have tons of highs and lows in it all over that counter. Okay, so now all we have left is a little bit of adamantium and black. And what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to leave black on top of some of these kits. So I'm just going to get rid of a lot of this and pour at the same time for some of these kits. But we'll take the two in the middle and we'll just leave black by itself 
on top of that and we'll use the rest of this adamantium. We'll split it between these two kits. What's funny guys, it looks like I'm a chef and I know everything that I'm doing, but a lot of this is just a fun guessing game. That's the beauty of these kits. You're gonna have a blast mixing these things up. And we could use the same colors and we could actually make a completely different look. It'll have a similar tint, but it'll be a completely different look. So now I'm gonna take black and I'm just gonna pour it in these last two in the middle that didn't get a lot. We're just gonna leave black in these. See if we can get a couple batches with some real vibrant black all by itself. And we'll even leave just a little bit in the bucket. We won't scrape it all out so that Tyler can even try to get a little bit out and make some tiny veins. So now we got five batches. I'm gonna give it right to Tyler because you don't wanna waste time. All right, so just like Tim said, we don't wanna leave these in the bucket longer than they have to be. So once they're mixed, we wanna get them into the counter and start dumping them out. I'm gonna just show you a quick way to kind of map out your design in your counter. That way you're not kind of guessing. Again, it doesn't matter. These are such an easy kit to do and they're always gonna look beautiful. But if you have a certain design in mind, you can take a paint stick and we can kind of just start mapping out our design on the top. So that gives me something to start with and you can do it over the whole counter or just one big vein you wanna do, it doesn't really matter. The next thing I wanna uh, talk about is we need to make sure we don't pour too much of this out in one section of the counter. So we're gonna start with one bucket, pour some out, kinda go around and make sure we're kinda swapping around. If you're doing an island or counters that are offset, different places, you wanna make sure you're not pouring too much of that product in one area. So we're gonna start, we have three buckets that have the white spray paint, so we're gonna dump one of these out first, maybe on, we'll start on this side and then we'll take another white one and we'll go over to this counter because we want to make sure we get white all throughout the, the kitchen area. So we're just going to start following this, this line that I created, kind of like a guide. So look at how beautiful that is. Such a cool look. This is going to level out. These are going to be absolutely stunning. So when I get a little out, I'll start to flatten it off and it'll create a wider, a wider bead. Now you can notice it's really random patterns. Um, a lot of different ways you can pour it out. I like to do the random patterns and make everything go different directions. It, it looks uh, really natural. Um, but again, you can go straight back and forth. You can do kind of softer, right? Like a softer pattern all throughout it. Totally up to you how you want to do it. So all I'm doing is just kind of going around. I'm going to use this full bucket out here and then I'll take another white one and do maybe that half of the counter and maybe a little on here just so I'm kind of getting that white everywhere. So again, you can tell I'm going really random patterns. And when I get close to running out, I'll slow it down a little bit and kind of let that flow off. Notice I'm holding it close to the counter. Now you can tilt these upside down, let them drip out, but I like to leave a little in there and I can use that later on for some really fracture, thin fracture veins, highlighting some of the patterns. So there's one bucket. So now I'm gonna take the other one that has the white in it and I'm gonna start on this side. I'll pour one bead out here and then I'll come over here. The next bead I'll pour out over there. That way I can kind of get the white on both spots. So now I'm gonna start from this side. All right, so about this time, I wanna be real careful that I'm not pouring too much out. Obviously, I'm not gonna need as much on this little guy as everywhere else, so to get to get the white everywhere, I'm gonna do the last white bucket. I'm gonna get a little on here, and then I'll save this, do the rest to fill in these, and then if I wanna add more white somewhere, I can either take spray paint and spray it into here, or I can just pour out of this. So notice I'm just going super random patterns. So that looks about 
about the same amount as everywhere else. So I'll save this for later. I'll grab the ones that don't have spray paint. And now I wanna go in and fill in everywhere. I don't wanna pour right next to a bead because again, this still is gonna level out. To, these would probably wind up touching. So I wanna go in the middle of these spots, go around the counter, do that, and then see what, what's left to pour out. So notice I'll try to pour smaller beads when I get in tighter spots. So we'll let this level out a little. We'll start working on these other spots. And when we come back, you'll see a lot of this will start to touch and fill in. And then we just kind of go around and fill in the bare spots. All right, so I want to get a little more white. I like, I like how this white's looking in there. So I'm going to spray some more white as I'm, before I pour out some of these, some of these other beads. So we're just going to spray into the side. And again, it doesn't take much. We'll start with that and see what happens. You can see how the white really pops now. And again, there was no white in here. So we're gonna keep spraying some white because I really like that effect. All right, so I got, I guess I got, I got one more with white in it. I didn't realize that. We had five, I thought we had four. So I have actually uh, just in spraying the spray paint into a cup and I can just pour in. Um, be a lot easier if I wanna add more white. So we need to get a little more on some of these spots. You can see how there's not a lot left to fill in here, which tells me I have some big bare spots out here. So I wanna start filling those in to try to get a similar uh, mist spots as out on the island. So we just sprayed some in a cup. Now I can just dump this in here. And again, it goes a long way, so I don't need to use a lot, but that's gonna be a lot faster and easier than trying to spray into here. So we're gonna try to get this back section, kind of run something around there. Yeah, see, I like that white. That white's really popping. Get a little right here. So now we'll add some more white to it. So as you can see, we don't have a lot of white in here. So I'm gonna do my, after I poured the white in, I'm gonna do that anywhere that I need, need some white. And kind of just do it sporadically. So it's kind of all throughout the counter here. So notice how this is starting to look more like the island. There's not a lot of missed spots. And again, I can save a little in the bucket for some fracture highlight veins and stuff. So now we got the dark one again. I probably wanna do a little more white out here. So I'll pour some, some white into this one as well. And again, if you guys don't want a lot of white, you don't have to add more, but this is a really easy way to add the spray paint. Again, I'm pouring smaller, smaller beads out now since everything's almost touching. So as you can see, I'm just doing stuff random. You can't screw this stuff up and these are gonna look absolutely beautiful when they all level out. So I'll add a little bit more white and this is our last bucket. So. We wanna now really start fine tuning these spots and starting to be more precise with how we pour it out. We don't wanna to pour too much out in some spots. Just start to fill everything in. back behind this sink here. I've got a decent amount of white in here, so I don't need to add any more. Just start filling this in a little bit. So we got a good amount of white everywhere, looking really good. 
probably won't add any more white. We'll just start filling everything in now. So I'll show you how to really fine tune your beads. Um, we're gonna use a piece of cardboard. We're gonna pour on the cardboard and it's gonna make those beads a lot wider. Just keep in mind, you're gonna get bubbles in these areas because we're basically layering a sheet of epoxy right over uh, uh, air into another layer of epoxy. So it is gonna make some bubbles where we do this, but that's all right because they will pop. So we'll pour a little out and then we'll just start getting it in the spots and it'll help, help fill in areas. You can see how wide of a white of a bead that makes. And get a little bit through here. All right, so I'll grab some, some other containers that have some left in it. And then we'll just, again, just keep filling in spots. Again, in another 10 minutes, most of this would wind up leveling out and filling in anyways. But there's no point in not using all the resin, so. We'll just go around and help fill in these back areas and all right so i started dumping i let these drip out into the other containers for a little bit and we'll start highlighting some of these some of these veins spots that aren't filled in so I've creased the bucket a little, and then I'm just kind of following any of these bare spots. So all I'm doing now is just going around, filling in any bare spots with the leftovers, and then Tim poured out just some straight black that I'm gonna use to do some, some highlight veins, some really skinny, solid black veins once I'm done with this. All right, so what, what I'll do before I do the, the, the solid black veins is I'm just gonna go around and anywhere that doesn't look like a natural spot, like, like it rounds off on the end, right? Like right here, and there's a little bit of a mist spot. There's a lot of resin there, right? There's just no color. So I'm just gonna kind of blend that in, get that color there. So if you're out, out of mix, this is kind of what you can do, right? Just come in, pat stuff around, get that color there. Even though it's, there's resin there, the color might not have pushed in. Because what will happen is these beads will push up that clear layer we did and fill it in. And so it creates a cool look if you have those throughout the counter, random spots like that. Um, but if you don't like it, just pat them in with your finger. It's real simple. I'm just doing anywhere that doesn't look like a natural spot. Um, like right here, it's kind of like a like a circle, we'll just blend this in just a tad bit. It doesn't take much. This one's pretty much good. So again, I'll just, we got plenty of resin out here. Just gonna tap in these spots. Don't worry about screwing up the design because it's gonna look beautiful no matter what. All right, so got just enough resin to kind of fill these spots in. Again, might as well use it all. I need to get some in the back here. Anywhere these back edges are, and I'll probably want to get some white back behind the sink just a little. I'll show you how we can do that. A little residue of spray paint, I'll just dip my finger in it. Get some on there. Right, kind of just blend that in. So again, I'm just looking for bare spots that don't have the color. There's really not a lot of them. And then once I'm done with that, I can go through and highlight with some black fracture veins. Okay, those are good. We got any missed spots here? Doesn't look like it. This one looks really, really good. So this, I'm gonna break this up a little. I don't want it so white. So I'm just gonna kind of follow that vein pattern, right? And just start breaking this up just a little bit get some of that metallics to come through there. There's just too much concentration of white right here. And then the same thing 
Same, same thing I'm gonna do back here and right here. Just kind of start running some, some veins, breaking this up a little bit. And if you guys like it, you can just leave it. But again, you can't really screw it up. Once we hit this isopropyl, it's gonna all blend out. These just won't be as solid of a white. This is kind of the look we're going for. Just highlights of white, not really solid colors. And blending that in a little is gonna help, help uh, kind of mute that solid white. All right, so I got my solid black here, right? Kind of map out. Obviously, I don't want to do a black highlight vein next to black. So maybe like this would be cool because it's all pretty, pretty light. So we'll pinch this cup. Start over here. That way we get a nice thin bead coming out. Hold it close to the epoxy. And then I'm just trying to follow one of these edges. Just like that. Really cool accent vein. Do another one, maybe right in here. Bring it out to that white that's out there. Run one through here. Do a little bit over here. And they don't have to start on an edge too. I'll start out here in the middle. Run right next to this white. All right, so before I spray the isopropyl, I'm just gonna make sure everything's covered. There's no bare spots, miss spots. And just kind of look, make sure everything's how I want it. There's no real spots that look like it was just poured out. It all kind of blends in and flows. All right, so we'll spray this with the isopropyl now. We're gonna be using 91% isopropyl. You wanna use 91% or higher. Um, and we're going for the smaller drips. If you don't want the uh, added effects, like the dispersing effects you'll get, you can just mist it. The other option is just misting it with denatured alcohol. But we're going for some cells add a little, little bit more character to this. So we're gonna spritz the whole surface. You can kind of see the drips that are coming out. Nice, fine, small little drips. Not spraying too much on it. Now, if you're in a house, obviously we're in a big warehouse, um, you're gonna probably wanna wear a mask when you're spraying this stuff, just cause it, it is a chemical. So that's the isopropyl spray. So a lot of these uh, cells and stuff and, and crater looking spots are gonna disappear where there's solid, you know, metallic pigments. A lot of spots where the, the spray paint is are gonna stay, all this should stay, right? So it will tone down a little bit, um, but again, if you don't want that, that added dispersing effect, just mist it with isopropyl alcohol um, or even denatured alcohol if you're, you're looking for popping bubbles or anything. But you can tell there's really no bubbles out here. Didn't have to torch it. So last thing we're gonna do is let this set up for about, it, it really depends on the temperature of your area that you're coating but usually it's anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours, again, depending on the temperature, when you pull the tape. And the best way to do it is to check your tape right when you're done, pull it back. See how fast that's moving down? It may seem slow to you because this is your first time or whatever, but that's moving way too fast. So we want that to set up a little so where when we pull this tape back, it's just barely moving. Because you can see, if I pull it now, a lot of this product's gonna go off the edge it's gonna to wanna to pull that design away. We wanna keep this design on the top. So by doing that, if we let the resin set up, start to get sticky, so it's not moving as much, and then we pull the tape, and there's enough resin on the top 
to flow over enough, even though it's sticky, to coat your edges. And we'll show you guys that when we do it. But again, best way to do, pull the tape back, test it, and I'll show you guys how it should look when you pull the tape. And again, it totally depends on your, your temperature that you're pouring this stuff out at. We're about, probably about 58, 60 degrees in here. So it is gonna take us a little bit longer um, for the resin to set up. All right, so I found one spot I didn't like after spraying the denatured. I can still mess with it. So if you see a spot that you don't necessarily like, like you can blend it in more. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of blend this in to the edge a little bit more and just kind of blend this in, right? Just so it kind of tone, tones it down a little bit. We run something in there. And then we'll just spritz that one more time and that'll help even everything out. So we'll take the isopropyl, we'll just spritz this spot. You tell it kind of just blends it in with the rest of the counter. So if you have spots that you don't necessarily like or anywhere you want to fine tune, just, just try to hit that right away. And again, once we pull these edges, it's going to move a little bit and it'll make this look more natural anyways, because these veins and stuff will go down that edge um, and look really, really cool. All right, guys, so it's time to pull the tape. And like I told you before, I'm going to show you what the, the kind of look that you're looking for when we pull this tape down to, to check. So notice how it's really flowing fast before. See how it's just barely moving. It's perfect time. So again, there's enough resin on here to flow over the edges. It's gonna coat them. Obviously, if you have thicker edges, like say you have a three inch edge or something, you're gonna wanna pull it a little sooner so it can flow a little more. But typical counter edges, inch and a half, two inches, you're gonna be fine. So we're gonna start, just tear the tape. Last thing you want to do is wait too long. So again, best way to test, you can tell it's moving, but it's moving slow. And you can pull it a little sooner too if you're, if you're worried about that. But you'll see, this will start to roll down that edge. We'll still have to come back and brush in any bare spots to get it to flow over evenly. But other than that, we really don't need to mess with the edges. So I'm just kind of pulling down at an angle you can kind of see how the resin just molds back onto the counter there. And you'll have some spots that are, are obviously thicker and some that are thinner. And if you have spots that like are not flowing, I'll show you how to touch those up. But you can see where we started. It's already halfway down the counter. Really cool process. Same thing here, it's starting to move. So we'll come over here. I know it's a little bit thicker out over here. So this will probably get down there a little bit quicker. But we'll just get all the tape pulled first and then we'll, we'll roll in brushing our edges. The reason we wait is because we don't want the top, the design on the top to change. If you were to do this technique without tape, all your, all your product would have these run marks because it's flowing over the edge and pulling it. So now it's set up enough to where the top's not gonna change. We're not gonna have any run marks or, or streaks where it looks like it's pulling over the edge. And the other th cool thing about this is your veins will come down at angles and stuff on the faces. So if you didn't wait and do what we're doing here, like for instance, like this vein here will come down at an angle. If we just poured it and let it flow off right away, they would be straight down. And I'll kind of point that out here in a little bit where you can actually see what I'm talking about. All right, so the next thing we wanna do, obviously it's flowing over the edge, but we wanna help it, right? We wanna fill in all these with epoxy. So it's creating surface tension, it's just gonna be dripping there. So you can either take a paintbrush or I'm just gonna use my hand because it's real simple and don't worry about screwing up the design that's coming down because this is still going to flow over the edge for the next probably half an hour and slowly drip. So all we're going to do, I'm going to take my hand, obviously I got a glove on, and we're just going to start flattening this off, just coating, getting everything coated with epoxy. And then once we get that whole surface coated in epoxy, that's going to help it flow over evenly. And again, guys, don't, don't worry about screwing up the design. I mean, if it's really sticky and it's not flowing, you might want to kind of go with, go with the design of the, of the top that's flowing over. 
but as long as you pull it in enough time, you're not gonna have to worry about that. Because again, this is gonna keep flowing. And if you have spots that are too thin or there's just not a lot of product there, you can get product, the leftover product that's in your buckets, um, spots that have maybe dripped off onto the floor where you have a lot. Like you can see like right here, there's obviously, it's going down to the bottom, right? Without even really touching it. So you can always find some, some uh, resin to use on your edges if you need to. So again, we're just getting this whole surface coated. So obviously if it's covered all the way, I don't need to brush that in, right? I'm just trying to get the spots that are missing epoxy. No point in just rubbing in your full whole face if it's basically coated already. And then this is the, the decorative edge that we did with the Bondo. This is gonna look really good. This is the second epoxy coat that we've done over these edges, so it won't be as noticeable, but you'll still be able to tell it's a different edge than the rest. So notice I'm just hitting the bottom edges because it's almost to the bottom, I'm not just smearing the whole face. Same thing here, I don't really need to touch there. All I'm doing is going to spots that need some resin. So you can see where we started. It's already coming down again. So once every all the surface tension is gone, it's gonna let the resin flow over more evenly. Same thing with right here, it's almost halfway down. So once we get it coated in, we don't wanna mess up the edges anymore. If there's some spots that are missing resin, obviously hit those, brush those in with your hand, paintbrush, whatever. Um, and then we'll let these, let these just start to flow over. All right, so obviously it's still gonna be dripping, but I'm gonna show you how to, how to scrape your drips. If the resin's getting sticky and set up, you wanna use something sharp. It's almost gonna like cut the resin off. Um, if it's still really fluid, you can use a paint stick. And I'll just start right here. We'll see how it is. It is a little sticky now. But see how it starts to build up on that edge if it's sticky? Like I'll show you here. See how it's kind of pulling and leaving some behind? If I take a scraper, something flatter, it's gonna almost cut that off and not do that. See that? So when it starts to set up, you wanna use some type of scraper, something that's really thin that you can just kind of cut that off with. And you just wanna be careful that you don't gouge up to the, up the side of the edge too. And again, it's still a little early. You'll probably have to do this periodically over the next maybe hour, hour and a half. You wanna scrape your drips, that way you don't have to sand them the next day. All right, so we'll, so we'll let these flow over, um, periodically check them. Again, we don't wanna walk away now and assume everything's gonna be good. Maybe, maybe you pull the tape too late and the resin isn't gonna flow all the way over. There's ways we can touch that up with a paintbrush, get a little white color if there's a white vein there. Um, other things is we don't want the edges to look like it's running anywhere, like right here. I'm not worried about this because it's still flowing over, but if this was setting up and not really dripping, I'd try to brush that in a little with my, like a paintbrush and just blend it up so it doesn't look like it runs. But other than that, that's pretty much it. We just kind of let it do its thing, flow over the edge, and then come back and periodically, we just have to scrape the drip. So pretty simple process once you get it done. One of the easiest countertop kits on the market. Simply pour the product out, self-level, self-marbleizes. You don't have to torch it. Seven days, fully cured. And we're gonna show you all the final footage next.